The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I want to share with you an unbelievable story about the Rebbe from Sasset. Oh, but this is something, uh, the first time I heard it, it was something that stayed with me, kept me smiling. The Rebbe from Sasev, he was coming to a town. In this town, there was a gentleman that was married for close to 19 years. 19 years without children. And it was at that time that he came to the Rebbe of his town and he cried, Rebbe, there's something you've got to be able to do for me. I cried out, I prayed, I did the sigulot, I did everything I could. And still, married now for 19 years without children, please, Rebbe, help me. The Rebbe says, I'll tell you the truth. I cried, I prayed, I tried everything. But now there's a great Sadi coming to our town, the Sasava Rebbe. If anyone knows how to get through the back doors of heaven, it's definitely the Sasava, the Kadosh. He's coming to town. Listen to me well. Tomorrow when he comes, stand by the gates of town. And right when he comes in, right away be the first one to run up to him and insist, make sure that he eats a meal in your house Shabbat by day. He's the one that can get you. You shuot like no other. Well, when the man heard this, he was elated. The Sassifer was coming to town, his last ray of hope. And it was there that he stood the next day by the shar, by the entryway of town. And from a distance he sees the rumbling of horses and a carriage coming towards the shar of the city. And he looks a little closer and he sees a tzaddik sitting in the back of the carriage. He says, this must be him. Here's the Sassifer. So what does this man do? What does a desperate man do? He jumps out in front of the horses, and he stands with his hands out, and he says, Rebbe, I can't let you into town. You have to help me. You're my only hope. The Sasava looks, I don't even know you. What's the matter? So the man runs up. He starts crying, Rebbe, I'm married for 19 years without children. Please, the tzaddik here in my city told me, if anyone knows how to get through the back doors of Shamaim, to get pe'ulot yeshuot like none before, it's only you. The Sasava says, well, I, I. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm a simple Jew. Okay, Rebbe, please. Just make me one promise. This coming Shabbat, you're going to eat in my home. The Rebbe says, well, okay. If I make you the promise, then I'm going to eat in your home this Shabbat. Will you get out from in front of my horses? He says, yes, absolutely. Okay, you got my word. This coming Shabbat, I'm eating in your house. With that, the man stepped aside and gave the red carpet entry to the town for the Sasava and his horses. And sure enough, that Shabbat came, and a beautiful Shabbat it was. Somehow when a tzaddik comes to a city, he lights up the whole city. And the Shabbat was a different Shabbat. And the next morning, right after Musaf, the Rebbe winks to this man and says, Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming to your house. I'm going to keep my word. And sure enough, 15 minutes later, there's a knock on the door. The man is with his wife, preparing the house, preparing himself for the great tzaddik to sit and eat the meal with them. The tzaddik walks in. The man comes to the Rebbe. Thank you, Rebbe, for coming to my house to eat Shabbat meal. Come sit down at the head of the table. The Rebbe says, wait. First, I need to look around. Okay. The Rebbe walks into one room. He's looking around. He walks out into another room. He's looking around. And the man walks up. Rebbe, what are you looking for? What is it? Let me help you. Let me guide you. The Rebbe says, no, no, shh. Let Let me finish. He walks into the next room. And then to the back room. And he's walking through the entire house. Rebbe, what are you looking for? Shh, let me finish. He makes a tour of the entire house, looking through every corner. Till finally the Rebbe turns around and says, I'm sorry, I can't eat in this house. The man says, why not, Rebbe? You promised me you're going to eat. I'm sorry. I do not eat in a house where there are no children. And I'm looking around the house. I see there's no toys. I see that there's no children's clothing. I see that there's nothing of a remnant for children. I cannot eat in a home that there are no children. And the man starts to cry. He says, Rebbe, but you don't understand. That's exactly why I insisted that you come eat over by my house. Because I want you to give me a blessing for children who are married 19 years. The Rebbe says, yes, I know. But Rebbe, you promised that you're going to eat by us. You promised. The Rebbe says, I know. I promised you. I promised you I'm going to eat here. And Bezat Hashem, I'm going to come back in a year from now when you're going to make a Brit Milah in this house and I'm going to eat the meal that I promised you I'm going to eat. And with those words, the Sasava Rebbe walked out of the house and closed the door behind him. And there on the front step, he put his hands up to Shamaim and he said, Borei Olam, Hashem, 
I never lied in my entire life. I always said the truth. Please, Borei Olam, I promise this man that I'm going to eat a meal in his house in a year from now by Brit Milah. Please, don't make this the first time that chas v'shalom I said a lie. You want to hear the end of this story? Well, no more than about a month and a half later, the news hit the town that this Jew married for 19 years. Miraculously, his wife became pregnant for the first time. And sure enough, exactly the way the Rebbe promised, a year later, when the Brit, Lila, Brit Mila was made in the town, the Sasuva Rebbe came back to the town, came into the man's house, and ate a lavishing meal. Take a look. The Tefilot, the Zechut of the Tzadikim. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.